Hey, if you're here right now, it's because you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. Just like I did when I first started. Here's the tips and tricks. <laughs> yes, I wrote them down. Um, that I learned from starting out with the cut pile gun. The typical gun, I think it's the only gun that's like, I need to clean mine. You should keep your gun in better shape than I do because this thing has seen better days. You'll notice that, see that? All the weird particles of yarn get stuck in there and it's just no bueno, so clean your gun. What I use to clean my gun is these little, like they're very shitty plasticky bristles on the brush and it came with my whole dog um, trimmer. So this is what I use right now to trim the carpet after I finish it. And eventually I do wanna get the sheep stuff because I find that it's bigger and it covers more, more surface and that way you can finish your job faster. First things first is what I learned and I learned it the hard way is always have your gun off because chances are you're going to forget that this thing moves and this trigger is very, very fragile, very sensitive. So when you'll be threading your stuff, like usually when you thread the gun, I don't know why I keep saying usually how you thread the gun is that you put your, yarn through here and then you will put it through this tiny hole here and usually because it is so tiny and the yarn is kind of fat you might want to use like a little wire threader thread thing it's literally a wire that i got at michael's um from the jewelry department and usually what you would do is like push it from the bottom it's not plugged in right now so this is why i'm holding it so carelessly, but it's also very hard to do this, like, you know, with one hand. But normally you see that hole right there and you would typically push your wire. I, there we go. So you, you don't see shit, do you? See how it came out? And then after your yarn goes in this hole, it goes into this hole and then in the wire, I'm probably so bad at <laughs> describing this, I'm so sorry. Now, what my dumbass didn't know, it possibly, yours didn't either is that i think you're supposed to use two things of yarn you know what i mean when i started using this i just put one thread of yarn but what i've noticed that my work was very like loose and not tight and then what i also noticed is that everybody else put two yarns in their hole i thought i could only fit one well, that's what she said and that's what she thought, but she thought wrong. While we're on the yarn subject and I'm kind of like all over the place and I'm so sorry, but write that down. <laughs> if you need blue, red, pink, whatever color you need, buy two of those because you have to thread two of them in order to make your work look tight. You see how you can't see like the fabric that the mons cloth or the whatever fabric you use, you can't see it because it's so tight, like there's so much yarn. It's because you use two yarn in one hole. <laughs> this is like my pink sky, white cloud kind of thing. This is my first big rug that I've tried. Um, and I used uh, burlap and I'll show you the difference. I used burlap for this one and I used single yarn in one hole. And the reason ooh, that you shouldn't do that is see how you can see in between and you shouldn't be able to see in between. So when I first started, and if you are first starting, um, I do recommend using burlap because it is the cheapest material on the market. I got mine on Amazon and you get so much for so little. But the thing with burlap is that, as you can see, it's quite see-through. So if you were to... Um, trace some kind of or draw some kind of intricate design you won't really be able to see it you can see the difference like i don't need to show you it's like white paper versus haystack like obviously you're gonna draw on the white paper the thing about burlap is it does hook quite nicely but you will have to give it like a room because it pushes quite easily and it might come apart. The thing about it also that's not very good, you can't really make organic shapes with it. And what I mean by that is any curvature, circular things, because 
it's just not meant for it. It's more for like straight lines. Once you feel like you've kind of leveled up a little bit, I do recommend <laughs> moving on to the monk's cloth and especially the ones that have those lines because this is perfect for when you're um, putting your monk's cloth on your frame. You know how to tighten it so the lines aren't like squiggly because you think you're making something straight but then once you take the rug off it's gonna be like not straight i feel like i'm the worst at describing it my apologies do let me know if i suck and what i should improve on anyway well why don't i show you how i put it on oh my god this is all over the place you should have started with a frame a friend of mine made this frame for me it's two feet by three feet um it's kind of shaky it's not very straight. So when you have your frame, whether you build it yourself or whether you buy it, the main things that's gonna change your life is these babes. You can get them at any hardware store and they're so cheap. That way you can clamp it on and your frame doesn't move when you work with your gun. The one thing that you should learn from me, my mistake, is when you use the clamps, you don't even really need to put like a lot of pressure. Like don't push hard because it literally means a little bit because when you push hard, what you might not realize is that this metal part is digging in deeper and it's going to create holes in your table. I just ordered carpet grippers off of Amazon or Canadian Tire and they're so easy to install. They already have the little um, nails and you just hook them in and then you just cut them to the size and be careful because it is like a more hardcore cactus so be careful with your fingers and whatnot make sure to install them facing outward so all of these little tiny um nails that are on the carpet grippers should be pointing all outside because once you push your fabric on if it's facing inwards it's just gonna slide off so what i do at first is kind of like gently push it onto like each angle each corner sorry all right so basically you see how this line is a little bit like swirly it's not as straight but i don't really care because i'm not gonna do anything in this area but make sure that all lines are pretty straight so when you pull this it's easy you just kind of pull it and let go pull it and release and then it just kind of tightens by itself so it should be pretty pretty tight um, shouldn't be like, I shouldn't be able to push through it. It shouldn't create any types of waves. Remember I told you put your clamps here, but don't put them too tight because that'll happen. Another thing about a gun. So when you thread it, sometimes you see this little hole. Let me see it. It's right, right there, like in the needle. Sometimes you don't see it. It's because the scissors are covering it. So what you have to do, you turn your gun back on. So now that it's on, you'll see this light is on. The adapter's light will also be on. So, see how it does that? So if your circle hole is not aligned, just give it a little gentle. But see how like easy it is triggered? But anyway, and then eventually the scissors will go in and then you'll find your hole. And then make sure to turn your gun off again before you thread it. I didn't know this thing existed <laughs> until I accidentally moved it. This is your speedometer basically, but it doesn't show you which way is faster and which way is slower. So you kind of have to guess it on your own. Oh, turn it on. So right now I'm pushing it to the left and it's really fucking fast. If I push it all the way to the left or to the right, this is the slowest, this is the slowest. And it's also very loud. So when you do use the gun, make sure you either have earplugs or you're listening to music in your headphones. What I learned is that the slowest, the speed is start off obviously with slow. Once you get more comfortable, you can enhance the speedometer. If you're working with organic shapes, it's best to start off with slow because you have more control over it. If you wanted to do just straight lines, you can go faster because that way you finish it faster. Another thing that I was struggling at first that wasn't really 
um, creating clean lines and was kind of like not cutting my yarn properly. Like the yarn would always be like, there would be a couple of threads in the yarn, they're not cut. So when I pull it out, like the whole design might come off, which was super annoying because this is a cup held on, so it should cut each yarn like careful. What I've learned is that a lot of it depends not just on the condition of your gun, but a lot of it depends on the quality of your yarn. So if you're using a softer yarn, yarn, a softer yarn, uh, it'll be harder for the scissors to cut it. But if you're using a better quality yarn and yarn that's a little bit more tough and stronger, the scissors will be able to cut it faster with no problem and then you won't have those kind of issues you see how this gun kind of looks like it's unfinished like all the parts are exposed but the reason why they're all exposed is that you can beep around with them but don't beep around with them a little like a lot basically i did do my research when a problem happened to me but my scissors were kind of like this is the, off. the scissors right here you see that little tiny that's them right here they weren't really cutting anything so it's like what the frick so then i kind of like traced the design and saw what where was connected interconnected so i just moved some bolts around <laughs> like because there's so many of them it's kind of like a puzzle piece in a way and then just moved some of them around they tightened them and then all of a sudden they started working so if you feel confident enough, do be done with it if it stops working, but do your research first. Now, how do you use your gun on your fabric? Easy, dummy. Just push against it and start using it. It really is quite simple. Like I said, it takes practice. Do practice on burlap first so you don't waste money on monk's cloth because it is quite expensive, but it is better to work with in the long run. I find that burlap is easy to rip and once you make a hole in your fabric, good luck fixing it. I mean, there are some tutorials on YouTube where people learn how to fix it, but it is so much work and it's so tedious and annoying and I personally don't have patience for it. So for me, the design is just wrong. When you use the gun, when you press it against your frame or against your fabric, don't push too hard because that's what will make a hole. Just do it gently enough so you have the stain touching the fabric. Get to know your gun. So first, just kind of move along with it. So this is basically how you move it and control it around is with this. But yeah, you just push it gently, try to work with the gun, see where it goes, and then you tell it what to do. It's kind of like any relationship. First, you just like, okay, you comply, and then you let your true color shine. You know what I mean? And then you tell the gun where to go. Whoa, that was really fast. Anyway, don't do that. Let's move on to the yarn. Yarns, this is. One thing that I don't have on my frame is the yarn holder. So normally when you see these videos, people have the yarn that comes on the cone and they put this cone on this holder and it like glides through your gun and then you just like, well, I don't have that. So all I have is just like straight up yarn like this with no cone or anything. And I've been meaning to get a yarn winder, but I don't even have anywhere to hold it anyway. So for now, I just do it my own thing. And my own thing is basically you just kind of have to unravel the yarn. You let it fold, you take as much yarn as you want, but make sure that you're using, like I said, two yarns. So two of the same color or whatever. And then you just unravel both of them at the same time and you make the length like this and you drop it on the floor and you kind of walk away. So it's like creates a little bit of a puddle of yarn, but make sure it's loose. So once it feeds through your gun, it's actually able to like, you know, go up and not get tangled. You will know once you try. What I also learned, which was a cool trick is that I was working on a design and once I was fixing some stuff, I noticed that I should have put a little bit extra lines in one of the spots, but I only had a little bit of yarn left. So I didn't have two, I had like a quarter of one yarn thing. So what I did is I just unraveled however much yarn I thought I needed at first, and then you just cut it and then I'll show you actually. Pretend that this is a lone, lone yarn noodle and you cut it as much as you think. And then in order to trick 
the gun into thinking that you got two yarns being threaded in there, um, you just take the two ends and you thread it through your gun and then your design comes out tight and compact as if you were using two things of yarn. You're welcome. That was a cool trick that I learned and honestly was a life changer because I thought like, shit, I have to go out and buy a whole new yarn just so I could have the two threads. And maybe everybody else thought this way and I'm just over here thinking I'm some kind of genius when in reality it's like a common sense thing in the yarn community, but I just thought I'd share it anyway. Okay, now we can move on to actual um, middle of the design stuff. What I've learned, again, in my personal mistakes, just because you think you have this X amount of space on your frame, do not think that you're gonna be able to use it all. So just because you have two by three um, feet or meters, what are, it's definitely not meters, two by three feet of working space, you don't. The reason is, and I'll show you and tell you why, and I learned that the hard way, is if you put your design too close to where the frame is, the gun is gonna hit it. You're not gonna be able to make it because look how bulky this thing is. So if you think you just need it to be like right here and it fits, you still have to fit this much into the frame. Don't put your design close to the frame. Leave a few inches apart. Also, if you're working on multiple designs, don't put them very close because once you're gonna be cutting them out, how are you gonna cut them out if they're literally like right next to each other? You know what I mean? Because once you cut it, you have to take these inches or glue them, sorry. You have to glue the inches at the back of your carpet, rug, whatever. So if there's none, what are you gonna do? And then another thing that I also learned, um, sometimes the, well, at the beginning when you're trying to do organic shapes like clouds or literally anything circular, it might be difficult for you to do that. So there's a trick around that. For example, this is, we'll draw it together. This is my frame and I wanted to do some clouds like this. So instead of going around like this in circles, like it's gonna, don't do that. So what you can do is you start off with like small line, then you make the line bigger and then smaller, depends on the shape of your cloud. That's, it looks weird cause it's just lying here, but on the other side, trust me, it's just gonna look exactly like a cloud that you drew here. And again, I stress it cause I forgot it multiple times, especially when doing portraits or writing, writing especially actually. Um, flip your design. When you print your design or when you make your design, flip it because when you use a projector to project it onto your canvas, your material, you're working backwards. So sometimes I would work on a portrait and then when I turn it around and I'm like, this doesn't look like that person. And then I realize it's because most of us are not models and don't have symmetrical faces. Another thing that I was going to say is when you work in your designs, do, if you do, do, <laughs> if you do, do outlines, do outlines first. Um, just so, well, actually just do outlines all the time. It's so much easier. You kind of create a coloring book, but with your gun and your yarn, um, do outlines first. So you have a visual of what things are aligned and stuff. And then you use the vertical lines to kind of color it in. Last but not least, um, trick that I've learned personally. So when you make your designs and when you do your um, gunning, <laughs> your tufting, um, sometimes you go over your lines. So you, for example, I'll show you. It, you might not be able to see it on here because these colors are kind of dark, but you see how for the most part it's a clean line, but it didn't look like that at the beginning. You will have to go around and fix your shit. So basically, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see here because the colors are both dark. But you see how like the purple is in the green here and here as well. Like it's not, like the purple just goes over to the green because sometimes you just kind of your gun just takes off and lives a life of its own on the cloth. So when that shit happens and it will, 
don't stress it's totally fine continue with working with your design and then what i've learned oh i missed some look here i missed i missed this one like see like what the hell is that so what i do i don't know how i came up with that and again hopefully this isn't like a common thing in the tufting community hopefully it's something i came up with it because i like my praise tweezers so before you even add like the backing and everything obviously it has to be done before it's too late now but while the rug is still being made um you just tweeze out the extras this to me is so fun like i just listen to my podcast or my murder mystery or my music and i just block away for hours and it's so satisfying like it's very satisfying that's how i fix my lines and make them cleaner i'm still learning as well so i'm sharing with you as i learn and clearly this looks like a freaking five grader druid but like this is very clean i'm proud of this side this the reason why is because like i said this is when i learned it i had this too close to the frame so my gun wasn't able to make a clear line here so I had to readjust my fabric, push it down, pull it down, and then redo it. And it was just, it was so chaotic and it was not great. And this is another one that I worked on. Again, I'm still far away, far, far, far away from perfect. You can see my lines, like I meant for them to be something, something, but you can still see that it's, you know, it, it could be cleaner. It could be cleaner. Like, it could be cleaner. It represents how I feel about tafting and how you will feel about tafting at the beginning as well. And then for the backing, I just use felt. I buy a bunch of felt on Amazon, very cheap. There's a lot of like, you get so many yards in one order and Amazon Prime, I mean, it delivers to you like right away. I usually look for the ones that are Amazon Prime. Um, I just, I'm a hermit. I don't like to go out into the people world and talk to them and go to actual stores and buy things and touch them and look at everyone makes palm talks that's not for me so i like to do everything from the comfort of my own home with my cats i was thinking of making maybe i'll make like the backing thing um because there's a lot of learning curvatures when you do the backing of your carpets as well what i do suggest is supporting other artists by making ordering either custom commission orders from them or whatever they have on their store and do it even if you <laughs> this feels kind of like shading away but use it as a reference material that way when you receive their stuff you see how much they charge and what kind of quality they provide for that kind of money so then you have a better idea of how much you should charge you know what i mean it's just a good reference and you're also supporting other artists so it's win-win in my opinion but let me know if you do want me to tell you how i do my backing my backing like i said i'm still learning i'm still new um but when i first started like pfft, kind of ashamed to admit that i sold some of my old stuff but so much better now and yet nowhere near what i would imagine myself to be but do let me know in the comments if you do want me to tell you how i do my backing and i promise i will actually do the visual stuff it's just i've been meaning to do this tutorial for so long and i just wasn't inspired enough and i feel like if you're not inspired there's no point in doing anything because it's just gonna look like you know what i mean if i explain good you write in comment that i explain good and i do more videos <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in and learning this stuff with me. And um, if you like what you saw and you think it's helpful, do subscribe or click like so you get to see other like creatives. So you kind of create an algorithm on your YouTube page so you get to see other creative people do stuff shit kind of like this. And 